Hello everyone. This is Geoengineering Free Canada. My name is Bettina Engler and I am with Geoengineering Free Canada. Today I would like to present to you how we can tackle the climate change narrative. Geoengineering in a nutshell. What is geoengineering? Geoengineering by definition is the deliberate large-scale intervention in the Earth's natural systems to counteract climate change. This is a definition by the University of Oxford. I typed it in. Unfortunately, it didn't come up anymore, so they must have removed it. But this is their definition. The University of Oxford, by the way, is heavily involved in geoengineering projects. So a very good geoengineering definition is methods release hazardous emissions into the atmosphere, including unnatural electromagnetic radiation pollution and other topic toxic agents like aluminum, barium, strontium, and sulfur dioxide, contributing to severe health problems that threaten people, especially children, birds, bees, wildlife, and all of nature. Another definition for geoengineering is the term associated with technology used to address climate change and global warming with solutions ranging from painting roofs white to genetically modified crops that reflect light, dumping iron into the ocean to make algae grow, this is ocean fertilization, pumping salt into clouds to make them shiny, marine cloud brightening, and even mirrors in space and acid clouds to block the sun. The types of geoengineering, solar radiation management, carbon dioxide removal, and earth radiation management. SRM attempt to reflect sunlight back into space and include a range of ideas from orbiting mirrors, tons of sulfate sprayed into the stratosphere, and modifying clouds, plants, and ice to make them more reflect more sunlight. Carbon dioxide removal. These proposals posit that possible to suck carbon out of the atmosphere on a massive scale using a combination of biological and mechanical methods from seeding the ocean with iron pellets to create plankton blooms to creating forests of mechanical artificial trees. Ocean fertilization. Best example, the Haida salmon restoration project, dumping iron into the ocean to save fish and capture carbon. ERM proponents suggest that negative effects on climate change can be offset by allowing heat to escape into space, for example, by thinning cirrus clouds. In other words, Earth radiation management is the opposite of solar radiation management. Solar radiation management, reflecting sunlight back into the sky, creating clouds by day. Earth radiation management, let the heat, the Earth's heat, escape back into the atmosphere and, and thinning the cirrus clouds, melting away the clouds, so creating clouds by day and none by night. The te geoengineering technologies. So the SAI, you all might have heard about this, stratospheric aerosol injection is a type of solar radiation management. The location is the upper atmosphere. It impacts air and land. And the proposal is to raise sulfites or other particles into the stratosphere to block the sun. Surface albedo modification. Again, another type of solar radiation management, the location is the forests, farms, and plantations. It impacts the land. The proposal is modify the surface of the earth in order to reflect more sunlight back into space. Marine cloud brightening is another type of solar radiation management. The location is clouds, impacts land and air. Proposal, spray salt water into clouds so that they reflect more sunlight. Cirrus cloud thinning. Earth radiation management. The location is the atmosphere. It impacts the air. 
and the proposal drones spray substances that dissipate cirrus clouds. Carbon capture storage, carbon dioxide removal, the location is land. It impacts the air and land, the proposal. Filter out carbon at the smokestack and bury it. Direct air capture, DAC. Carbon dioxide removal, the type. Location is the upper atmosphere. It impacts layer and land. And the proposal is suck carbon dioxide out of the air. And here are some examples for carbon dioxide removal. On the top left corner, you can see uh, this is a facility based in Squamish, British Columbia. So that's between Vancouver and Whistler. This facility is, looks like a big storage unit and you can see on top of the roof these fans or turbines. Those are there to remove the carbon and suck the carbon dioxide out of the air and store it in these big giant storage units. In the middle there is the marine cloud brightening which is uh, obviously happening on the ocean in the water. Uh, those big turbines, they uh, pump the water into these big spray hoses and then they spray the salt water into the air, into the atmosphere and create uh, those lines you can see on the, on the right side, um, just right above the ocean, above the water. And then there is another infographic what might be of interest for you to see how ocean fertilization is happening and then the ocean fertilization itself in the middle and on the on the right bottom right corner you can see the red iron that they have dumped in the ocean to uh, remove carbon dioxide and they name they say save the fish these are some interesting infographics here as well about the sulfur in the stratosphere, the 10 weather modification technologies on the top left corner, and then some solar climate intervention methods, and then on, certainly on the bottom right, the lines in the sky. We all have seen those lines in the sky. So who is behind geoengineering? There is some patents in the US. There are some agreements about HARP. There is the military. This is an infographic on how uh, the uh, jet engine burns the fuel. This is another agreement between the United States and the United Kingdom. And this man is uh, really behind geoengineering and modifying the weather and owning the weather and controlling the weather. The foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. That will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Who controls the weather will control the world. So weather warfare and cloud seeding. The military and the commercial aviation. Here's an interesting article about weather as a weapon of war. Control the weather, control the world. And this already happened back in the Vietnam War, the Operation Popeye. This is all military. Now, the commercial aviation is creating clouds and pollution as well, with 39 million flights per year, creating clouds creating pollution. Don't get me wrong, I'm not here to ground any flights. I love flying. I would have been a pilot if I had the money. But this is what's happening. 
we want to get rid of geoengineering. We don't want to get rid of flying. Another interesting operation, a Canadian operation, was the um, Operation Umbrella. This goes back to 1965 in Quebec. And uh, I named it Where Did All the Men Go? Because that was obviously all women carrying an umbrella and protesting uh, to ban artificial rain. Artificial rain already back in 1965. So don't tell me that this is normal. Because we know that you know it's not. Just by looking up the sky, you'll notice all these artificial man-made clouds. The sun isn't yellow anymore. Look at this picture. It's even diamond shaped. It's not round. Why is this happening? We've seen all these artificial cirrus clouds. And this is mission accomplished whitening and brightening the sky, blocking out and dimming the sun. Just look up. There is no climate emergency, no climate change emergency. It's not the climate that changes. The climate does change, of course, but not the way they are trying to sell this to us. It's the weather they modify. I'd like to point you to some very important documents about uh, weather modification. The first one that just came in is weather, war, uh, weather as a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025. Owning the weather in 2025. Who controls the weather controls the world. Lyndon B. Johnson. And then there's another document it's a, an agreement between Canada and the United States of America, an agreement relating to the exchange of information on weather modification activities, and that's been signed in 1975. And this document is the most important for Canada. It's the Weather Modification Information Act. Where do, we, where do you find all these documents? Just go in Canada.ca, these two will pop up as soon as you type in in the search bar weather modification. You'll find those documents. And you will also find those documents on our website, geoengineeringfreecanada.com. We've got them there. You can just upload them, download them, print them off, whatever you wish. They are available. They are public. So here's the contrail and chemtrail conspiracy. Language is important and controls the debate. So chemtrails and contrails are both terms referring to clouds made by jet aircraft. Choose the word contrail while speaking to scientists, MPs, MLAs, etc. Because using the word chemtrail may cause them to discount the value of your words. So both chemtrails and contrails are high-level descriptors, meaning they are highly argumentative and have different meanings based on the individual. So here's, again, chemtrails, contrails, persistent contrails, etc. In my opinion, the most accurate term is artificial clouds. And here is another interesting paragraph uh, this is out of a book from Alana Freeland, Under an Ionized Sky, Chemtrails versus Contrails. You can look it up or just go on her website, alanafreeland.com, and you can pull up all her publications and her books that she has just published about geoengineering, published about geoengineering. So are serious clouds filled with metals? That's the most common question. We always have, we always receive. Yes, it's true. The IPPC reports on aviation pollution confirm that aluminum, titanium, chromium, iron, nickel, and barium are emitted by jet aircraft. So aircraft jet engines also directly emit metal particles. 
Their sources include engine erosions and combustion of fuel containing trace metal impurities or metal particles that enter the exhausts with the fuel. Metal particles comprising element such as aluminum, titanium, chromium, ferrum, which is um, iron, nickel, and barium are estimated to be present, present at the part per billion by volume, PPBV. And all of that creates weather modification. Here's another interesting um, story about the aviation gasoline development between 1903 and 1980. I'm not going over this in detail. I give you a moment to read it and just to go over it. Thank you. So what are they spraying? We mentioned aluminum, barium, strontium, coal fly ash, black carbon, which is soot. And here are all the metals detected in jet exhaust. And we can confirm this because we took a fuel sample to a lab in Alberta. And yes, it came back with all these, not all of them, but we specifically asked for aluminum, barium, strontium, all the heavy metals. And they, this came back with um, a confirmation that this is in the jet exhaust. You will find it in the jet exhaust. The only difference was we could not get them in parts per billion. All we got was milligram per kilogram. And that is a huge difference. So we quickly touch ocean uh, fertilization for a little bit uh, because that's been mentioned before. Uh, so that means it's dumping iron into the ocean. And here's a definition what ocean fertilization refers to dumping iron as powdered iron sulfate or other nutrients into the ocean in areas with low biological productivity in order to stimulate phytoplankton's growth in theory, the resulting phytoplankton draw down atmospheric CO2 and then die, falling to the ocean bed and sequestering carbon, carbon dioxide removal. So that is marine geoengineering. And between profits and climate protection, our oceans are becoming an experimental field. This is another definition of ocean fertilization. And this also refers to the Haida Salmon Restoration Project, which was the biggest geoengineering project around the or along the British Columbia Pacific coast. Geoengineering and transhumanism. People ask us, is there a connection? And yes, there is. If you want to know more, we would like to point you again to Alana Freeland's book, Geoengineered Transhumanism. It's, I believe it's her third um, book about geoengineering out of hopefully becoming four now, because this is what, she, what we are all waiting for, her fourth book. So follow the money, as always, in this Plandemic, the most recent four years ago announced COVID 19 plandemic. It's all we have to do is who is behind it? Bill Gates and friends. This is Soros, Jeff Bezos from Amazon. These guys are promoting a company called Make Sunset. They are based in the United States in California. And these guys are launching balloons containing SO2, sulfuric um, acid, um, in Nevada, California. So they are just close together here. 
But unfortunately, unfortunately for us, there is a lawsuit happening. So hopefully this will get ruled in our favor so that this will stop and will end geoengineering. This is their website, Make Sunsets. They believe that SAI, we talked about this, stratospheric aerosol injection, is the solution to cool the planet. This is an infographic. Uh, we have designed Geoengineering Free Canada because we all know that there is no climate change emergency, but there is a poisoning emergency and the jet fuel issue and the toxins sprayed on all of us. So if you wish, you can download this file from our website, geoengineeringfreecanada.com, and use it for, you know, hand it out at rallies, at gatherings, at meetings. Even give it to your officials, your elected officials, your mayor, your city council, MLAs, MPs, whoever you wish. That's all they have to do. Look up and see what's going on in the skies and what will eventually rain off. And not just eventually, it does rain off. Is there a climate change? That's fake news. What is the solution? Geoengineering and weather modification are not a conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy facts. So here is what we would like to see as a solution, or what we suggest as a solution. So stand up and do not comply. We will never comply. Do a true research. Quit Google. Send in FOIs, Freedom of Information, and educate yourself. Ask yourself if you want to breathe in the daily dose of toxins. Join the NMOD. You'll find more details on climatebureau.com about the Environmental Modification Convention NMOD Weather Warfare Ban. And then 40% of the crop has been destroyed, so there is a food shortage. Prices are skyrocketing. And I just recently spoke with um, a few farmers, and it's not just 40% anymore. It climbed up to 75%. Join us. Join the coalition, because this must stop, because there is no climate emergency. Thank you very much for listening, and how can you join the coalition? First of all, the skies must be blue again. The Canadian skies must be blue again. We oppose all methods of geoengineering, which include spraying our skies with chemicals, making clouds to block sunlight. You cannot solve pollution with more pollution. This is a very beautiful quote. You find it on climateviewer.com. But Geoengineering Free Canada supports this quote because we want to see these guys fly. We want to see the bees supplying us with beautiful honey. And here is how you can join the coalition. Please just go on our website, geoengineeringfreecanada.com. You will find really useful information under the documents, all the documents. You can download, you can print them off, you can hand them out. And there's also useful links to all the people we are working with. We are very, very grateful to work with the best of the best in the geoengineering world. Join us. Become a member of Geoengineering Free Canada, sign up for our Substack, and then we will hopefully, and not just hopefully, we will be able to come out strong so that we can create a Geoengineering Free Canada and a Geoengineering Free World. Thank you very much.